All right, hey friends, what's up? I'm Elizabeth, if you don't know, this is Reading Riley, and today we're doing something a little bit different. It's not necessarily book related, but it's book adjacent. On my Instagram, I went ahead and gave you a little bit of information about Miss Frances Glessner Lee, and then I asked you if you might be interested in a detective style video where we look at her miniature crime scenes and try to figure out some clues together. And the overwhelming response was yes, absolutely. Hell yes. So we're doing it. <laughs> I don't know the rules for all this. So I'm not going to monetize it. This this is just for fun. Okay, I need to give you some backstory if you're new to this conversation. I have recently read Savage Appetites by Rachel Monroe. It is a nonfiction that tries to understand why women are obsessed with true crime. And in that search, it becomes more of a case study of four women in history who have lived lives obsessed with true crime. And one of those people was Frances Glessner Lee. So I read this book, I became obsessed with Frances Glessner Lee. And for the last like 48 hours, I have been watching every YouTube video I could find. There's a book written about her that I haven't read, but I absolutely need to find it and need to read it. I'm just like manic about this woman right now. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about a little bit of background about her. And then we're just going to analyze these pictures. I found several pictures of her dioramas, which are titled the nutshell studies of unexplained death. There are 19 of them. I found seven different ones which had pictures from different angles that I felt gave us enough room to make some assumptions. So who is Frances Glessner Lee? She was born in 1878 as an heiress in Chicago. Her parents didn't want her to go to school, so she did not. She got married, she lived this life that she was supposed to be living, but she got bored. And so she decided to make small, tiny little dioramas that were scaled down for every foot would be one inch. So say if you have a six foot tall man, it's gonna be six inch tall doll inside this diorama. Diorama, I don't know how to say it. And some of these were based on real crimes, but the intent and the purpose of these was actually to teach police officers, detectives, etc., how to train their eye when they walk into a death investigation. They are supposed to be tools that people can use to hone their skills. Even today with all of the technology that we have, finger pinching and everything else, etc., if a police officer or a detective walks into a, a room for a death investigation and they take it wrong and they don't look at it correctly, they don't understand the information in the right way, then they're automatically starting off on the wrong foot in this investigation. And then the rest of their findings can then be based on an artificial premise. So it's so important even today to hone these skills. And on top of that, the detail that she puts into these are astronomical. The hours that must have gone into these are insane. She would knit socks with straight pins for these little models just straight pins just knitting oh my god it's insane and you're gonna be so impressed when we look at them today she is known as the mother of forensics she later on in her life went on to fund the department of legal medicine at harvard university she created several different courses and classwork um, she created a police school for forensics towards the end of her life was also a professor and a teacher she was also the first female in 1943 to be appointed chief of police in New Hampshire. I mean, this woman does it all. She was such an incredible badass and she devoted her life to the study of forensics. So I am just, I'm, I'm so impressed by her. So let's get into these dioramas because I can't wait to show you them. If you haven't seen them before, they're so incredible. So I have seven of them. We're just gonna see what we can find out. If we can get any clues, um, try to make any theories about what may have happened. Oh, I should add a disclaimer that while these are not real crime scene pictures, they are effectively dollhouses, but some of these pictures are quite disturbing. So content wise, if you're going to look at these and be completely disturbed, then maybe don't watch this, maybe back out now. But if you come at me in the comments and tell me that I'm depraved and you're pissed that you watch this, then that's on you because I just gave you a warning. So, um, so yeah, let's go ahead and look at some of these. Okay, this first one I'm calling Blue Picnic because of the floor. As we look at this first picture, we have, it looks like a woman in bed. All of these are presumed to be dead because this is supposed to be the scene that the police are walking in on. So from this picture, we see a calendar on the wall. It looks like December, 1944. There is 
a brown spot on that carpet next to her bed, which I don't know what that's supposed to be. But another thing that really stands out to me is the worn areas on the floor right next to the door and next to the little bath bathing area wash tub thing. She's got something hanging up on the wall there next to the door in front of the bed look like some shoes. So let's see. And then there's a little basket and a stool looks like at the end of the bed, some kind of stool or, or um, case of some kind. Other than that, that's pretty much all I'm seeing here. So let's look at it from a different angle. Okay, this angle is a little bit higher up, but we pretty much have the same deal. Let's see if there's anything else in here that maybe we didn't catch. I'm curious what is on that door. It looks like it might be a doorbell, which would be strange. It's got, looks like a button and it's like attached with a rope or something. I don't know if that's a doorbell or what. Let's look at the next angle. I think I have two more. Okay, so from this angle, we're seeing the other side at the bottom of the bed. We have another worn spot on the floor next to the dresser. So she spends a lot of time there. The window is blocked off and oddly looks like it's been like clawed or something. We've got the wastebasket next to the dresser, little knickknacks on the dresser, a hat. I don't know what that bottle is. I don't know, it could be a beer, it could be some kind of perfume or poison, it could be poison. Oh my God, what if it's poison? On the dresser, it looks like there's just little knickknacks, like maybe a compact, a hanky, potentially a pack of cigarettes, I don't know. And then on her chair there, we've got an outfit that looks like it's been laid out and her little strappy heels. I, I'm thinking that this girl is being kept captive. That's my assumption here. She was held captive. There's obviously, she spends a lot of time in this room because those three spots are so worn. And that doorbell on the door makes me think that like she has to use, like why would you have that on the inside? But she's got this nice outfit with the hat, little strappy heels, like she's either just gone somewhere or she's going, planning on going somewhere, which is strange. I have one more picture. And this is just a little bit different angle of that same, same kind of angle there. Looks like those are cigarettes and matches. Still can't tell what is in that bottle. And I'm really not seeing anything else from this. So let's go back to one of the pictures with her in it really quick. So if she was held captive here, how did she die? Was that poison on the dresser? Did she somehow get her hands on that? Where was she going or where had she gone? It doesn't look like there's any kind of blood or anything. So it looks like she just fell asleep or something. And that stain on the carpet bothers me. I don't know, like it looks brown, like it was like, like it's like poop or something, but what if it's just from her standing up from the bed so many times over and over, it could just be that. So what do you guys think? If you want to talk about this in the comments, let's call it Blue Picnic. And um, tell me if you see anything that I'm missing. I'm very intrigued. All right, let's go on to another scene. Okay, I'm calling this one Green Bedroom. I have three photos of this one. So let's start with this one. Someone, again, is lying in bed. Tons of bottles on the floor. It's hard to tell if they are, they kind of look full, but maybe that's just the color of the bottle. Cause I don't know what that, if that's supposed to be alcohol or what, or what this tub is. That looks like a, it looks like if you look really closely, you can see a tiny corkscrew on the floor as well. And then you have this tub with all of these like newspapers or cardboard or something that's like been stacked up in them. So I don't know what this, this is. I would think that that would be someone wanting to start a fire, but if they want to start a fire in their house for the purposes of suicide, then why would you contain it in a tub? That wouldn't make sense. So it, from what I can tell from this angle, this looks to be a man. Although the decor and the wallpaper in here looks very feminine to me, but maybe that was just the case back then that, you know, women decorated bedrooms. I don't know. There's also a bottle of something sitting on his nightstand there, which again, I can't tell if that's alcohol or what. And there's something next to it on the nightstand too, but I don't know. I don't know what that is. Okay, so we're moving over. 
The window doesn't look like it's been broken or disturbed. Everything kind of looks in place. You see his tie there on the dresser that's been hung around. So I think this is a man. And that's all I'm really getting out of this photo. So let's go to the next one. Okay, this now is a close up of his dresser. And you can see there's a photo there of a wedding. It looks like a man and wife, which is interesting because the wife is nowhere in this scene. So where did the wife go? Did the wife kill him? Got a little doily and a little broom under that. The dresser drawers are slightly ajar. And then on top of the dresser we have, looks like a stopwatch, maybe a few coins and a wallet. Again, some cigarettes, another doily. And that's it, that's all I'm getting out of this photo. So what are we to take from this? There's no evidence of the wife living in this bedroom. So are they separated? Are they divorced? Is he sad? Did he kill himself because he is sad about losing his wife potentially? Or was this some kind of setup? Why are those drawers, drawers slightly ajar? I don't know. Let's look at, I have one more photo. And this is kind of a fisheye lens here of the whole room. Okay, so in this one, we see a couple of chairs that we didn't see before and another part of another dresser. On this chair, it looks like he's laid out his clothes. So it looks like he was just planning on going to bed. He got home from work. He took off his pocket watch and put his stuff on the dresser. He laid his clothes down, he went to bed. That's what this looks like. And here, we also have another window, which looks like it could be cracked open a little bit, but it's hard to tell. I can't make sense of this bucket on the floor with these, with the newspaper. There's no fire. There's no evidence of any kind of fire. So what's the point of all that? Is he drunk? Did he drink whatever these, or is in all these bottles? I don't know. What do you guys think? I need help. So y'all help me out with this. I, I can't even form an opinion on this situation because I, I, I can't tell how he died. Obviously in real life, the body would then be taken to the medical examiner and then you would get more information based on how that person actually died. But for these purposes, we're just looking at, at the scene to see what we can find out. And there are no definite answers. There's something else on the floor next to the corkscrew in front of that little bucket. But it's so small, I can't tell what it is. It could just be another piece of paper. I can't, I can't tell what it is. So yeah, I think that's all I can get from this scene. Let me know your theories down below. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, this next one I'm calling kitchen. So we clearly have a woman face down on the kitchen floor. The refrigerator door is open. She's got, looks like an ice tray next to her with maybe like a wash towel or something. The oven is open and there she's just baked something. And then the right side of the picture we have looks like an iron there. We've got a rolling pin and a cutting board and a bowl on the next table. And I think that's all you can really see in this one. So based on this, I don't think this is suicide because she was in the process, it looks like, of taking that ice tray out of the freezer there. You can see where it would have gone. She either, oh, it looks like she's face up actually. I couldn't tell, but it does look like she's face up. So she either fell back or someone pushed her down or I, I don't know. Let's look at the next photo of this. Okay, here we have a little bit different angle. You can see the other side of the kitchen better and you can see the sink. This is what I'm talking about in the detail of these. There are potatoes on the sink. It looks like she's running water in a big bowl, whatever those are called, pot, to maybe boil those potatoes. She's clearly been like doing things. She's been busy doing the house things, cooking, cleaning. We see a calendar that says April 1944. Little, little timer on the window ledge there. And then the window, the window actually looks cracked. That could just be this picture. That could just be the angle. I don't know, but the window looks like it might be open a little bit. You can kind of see it in this picture, but not completely. But look at the door there and you'll see on the outside, the outer edges, it looks like it's been stuffed with something. This leads you to wonder if this is like a gas fumes thing from the oven and could it potentially be suicide because of that. Let's move to the next picture because I want to show you close up of that door. 
Okay, so now we're looking at the door. You can see clearly on the floor there's a bunch of newspapers and the newspapers have been pressed into the layers of the door. Then you can also see this chair next to the door with some towels and on top of it, it looks like a knife. Why would a knife just be on top of that pile of blankets or something, I don't know. And then we have this kind of pantry hutch area. Again, this detail is incredible. We've got coffee, flour, grape nuts, wheat meal, asparagus soup, like all of these have to be the size, like smaller than your pinky nail. Like that's how small these things are. And then there's something on that ledge on the right side, right side bottom that I don't know what that is. It looks like some kind of electronic, like it's got like a cord coming out of it or something, but I don't, I don't know what that is. And then there's a basket, maybe that's laundry or something on the floor that she was doing. Let me see if I have another angle here. Okay, here's kind of a fisheye lens of the whole room. So let's think about this a little bit because if she didn't plug up that doorway with that newspaper, surely she, she would have noticed it, right? And maybe the knife was used to kind of shove the newspapers in there. But if that's the case, then why did she continue doing all of her household stuff? Like if she was trying to kill herself, why was she cooking? Why is she going to make that bread or whatever it is that she's not going to ever eat? Why would she do, be doing the laundry? That wouldn't make sense. So you don't want to think that it's suicide. There's something outside that other window too that we can see now that it looks like maybe a clothesline. And if that window above the sink is cracked, then the newspaper in the door wouldn't have served their purpose. I don't feel like she was intending to die, but what is with the newspaper in the door? Any ideas on that? She would have noticed it, right? Maybe they're in, you know, this could be a house or it could be an apartment. Maybe they're in an apartment. She didn't want the smell of her cooking to get out. I don't know. I can't think of, I can't think of why she would do that and then look so unprepared for her death if that was her, if that was her intention. I don't know, y'all let me know what you think. Okay, let's move on to the next one. This one I'm calling The Burned Cabin, or I think that's already the name for it. I'm not taking credit for that name, but that's what I labeled it as. So first, we're looking at this outside perspective. You can see it's a small little cabin. The very left side has a lot of fire damage, and she actually burned these in order to get that effect. And then the middle portion with the window, it looks like it's got a lot of soot on the top portion of it from the fire, but the bottom portion looks okay. And then the right side, this little addition it looks like, or I don't know what you would call it, is in like perfect shape. Let's look at this with different lighting. Here we have pretty much the same. If you look closely, you can see the bed in the burn side. Again, the top of the window full of soot. The window looks like it could be cracked. That could be from like the pressure of the fire, or that could be a result of deterioration since these are from the 1930s. And then the right side is perfectly, again, intact. Let's look at the inside. Okay, first I'm gonna start with this photo. because It's not really a close up, but the lighting's really good and we can see what's going on here. So you've got the bed in the right corner there and that looks like that could potentially be where the fire started. I think where the fire has done the most damage is typically where it starts, but it's weird that it hasn't caught onto the other side because the other side of that room is still really intact but what's really strange actually is that window because from the other side the bottom was not covered in soot it looked clear and it looked like there was something white look at this what is that white thing why does it look black from the inside just an observation okay so back to this photo the left hand corner you can see there's another calendar there can't quite read what that says, but obviously the light is functioning. It's not been burned. You see the open door there with the chair, the turned over chair on the floor. And then there's a big chair in the back corner, a big comfy chair. And then potentially some kind of stove or heater system going on there. Lots of debris on the floor. Not sure what that stuff on the floor is. It's hard to say. There is a body in this bed. We'll see it in just a second, but... Looking over at the dresser, looks like we've got a tie or something, and then an alarm clock there. And I have no idea what started this fire. What do you guys think? Could have been smoking in bed maybe? I don't know. So let's look at a different photo where we can see the body. Particularly gruesome. Doesn't look like that body has hands or feet. It is completely decimated. And it looks like, actually, look on the dresser. 
Next to the alarm clock, it looks like maybe that's like a straight razor, just a guess. Could be like a watch or something too, I suppose. Still can't really tell what that stuff is on the floor. It's clearly like burned, probably sediment from the roof and such. But there's one thing down there that I, I don't know, it looks like a brain or something. I'm sure that's not what it is, but yeah, we can now see that this is like a little stove deal in the corner there. And then from this angle, you can kind of see into the door, into that other small section of the house. Looks like there's like a, a stove top there. So let's look at that angle. Okay, here you can see the little stove top leading into that door in the middle of the picture, and that is the other room. That's the door into the other room. To the right, is that another door? I can't tell. But my initial thoughts on this picture are that there is a table here set for two. We've got two chairs, two um, place settings set up there. So where's the other person? And you have these two cans it says pet milk is pet like a brand brand name thing or is it milk for pets i don't know one of them's punctured and open there's a bowl of something next to that like it looks like two people were getting ready for dinner and then in the doorway back to the other room there's some kind of looks like a glass container of some sort on the floor there and i really can't figure out what that is if they have pets is that some kind of pet water bowl or something i don't know no it's too big for that I don't know. And then, so to the right, you have some shelves there with some cans and such. All like precise detail again. This is incredible detail. And then it looks like another like window ledge or something on the left. On the wall behind the stove top, you've got a, a spatula, a couple pots, spoon there. So what do you guys think? What did this have something to do with his significant other, his partner? I don't know. Let's move on. Okay, this one is called the three family dwelling. This one's probably the most disturbing of the crime scenes. So let's start with this photo where we have this look into the master bedroom. And we have the wife presumably on the bed and the husband on the ground there. Lots of blood, lots of blood going on here. So let's just start in the back. We've got something coming, hanging out of the closet door. It looks like some kind of garment. You've got a dresser there with an overturned chair next to it. On top of the dresser, it looks like maybe a perfume bottle, some kind of like keepsake box and a brush or a mirror or something. There's clearly blood footprints leading to whatever that door is from that door to the dad. So don't know what happened there. And then on the nightstand next to the mom, there's a phone and something else. And then there is a pillow in between this other nightstand or whatever this blue thing is in the bed. I don't know. I don't know what the what's the deal with the dad on the floor because he's on top of a blanket. So you would think he was on the bed and maybe he was shot and he fell onto the floor. But then why is he on top of this blanket? That's the weird part for me because there's another like comforter on the bed that the wife has. So is that an additional blanket? Was he already sleeping on the floor? And if so, why is the blood stain on the bed like that? Cause like maybe they were arguing he's, he was sleeping on the floor. I don't know, let's look at another angle. Okay, here's an angle looking into the bathroom or whatever the other room is. Is it a bathroom? It looks like a kitchen maybe. Clearly footprints leading out there. So. Either somebody killed the dad and then stepped in the blood and walked out and that's the like killer's footprints or the dad got hurt in that other room and wound up in here and walked back in but then why is that blood stain on the bed? To the right you can see a sewing machine by the window. The window potentially could be open, it's hard to tell. Let's look at this one from above because this makes it pretty clear that like somebody got hurt on this bed also if you look at the blood splatter from the mom, it's on the right side of her pillow, it's behind the phone on the wall, and it's almost all the way up to the closet door on the wall, which makes me think she was just laying like that. She was asleep. And when she was shot in the head and that splatter got splattered in that direction because she was shot from the angle of right next to her in the bed like from behind. That's interesting because that makes you think that it was 
the husband that shot her. And then if you look at the nightstand, you can see a, it looks like a flashlight. I don't know what it is. It's not bloody or anything. And then there's some kind of book that's peeking out. It looks like a direct directory or something. Phone directory, maybe. Did the husband shoot her and then shoot himself? And if he did that, where's the gun? And now this next picture I'm going to show you is really disturbing. So just you've been warned. And that is the baby's room. Let's just go straight in for the bad one here. And so this is the baby who was also, it looks like shot from the angle that we're looking at it because the blood splatter is on the back of the crib and on the wall above, but it could have been from straight down too. I don't know, I don't know that much about blood splatter. We've got her little stuffed animal in bed with her. The door is open, but this isn't the door that we saw from the other room because that didn't look like this. And then there's a chair next to her crib. Poor little baby. Okay, let's look at a different picture of the baby's room. So this one's kind of a broader fisheye shot here. There is a little table in there. There is a window in there that may or may not be open. It's hard to tell. The main thing that you can see in this picture is a giant blood spot on the floor. And that looks, that's just really weird because like it's not leading from anywhere. So it's not like someone would have picked it up on their feet, it looks like it's like dripping, like it was dripping down from something and it's pooled. So that's interesting. And then there's like all these marks on the floor. And I don't know if it's, I can't tell if it's part of the pattern or what those little faint blackish marks are, if they could potentially be footprints or like maybe like cat, cat footprints or something. I don't know. But if you look really closely on the floor there, there looks like maybe a cigarette on the ground. So somebody was in there bleeding and smoking, potentially. And then on her dresser, there's so many chairs. Why are there so many chairs? Like, there's little teeny tiny chairs on her dresser that have been toppled over. There's a little pink baby chair. There's a chair next to the crib. There's another chair next to the table that's been knocked over. Another stuffed animal down there. The door's open. I don't know. I don't know what to think of this. Did the dad come in here, kill the baby? And then go back out leaving footprints or did the killer kill the dad and walk back in to maybe the bathroom to wash up you don't know here's one more angle of the crib i don't think this one necessarily says anything that we don't already know other than you can see the like hamper with the blanket kind of coming out of that so i don't know what do y'all think any theories this one is definitely the most disturbing i think let's move on Okay, this one I'm calling The Staircase because it reminds me of the documentary, The Staircase. But you have this living room, you have this like cozy living room, this big comfy chair, fireplace, little carpet. You've got, it looks like that someone's been like hanging out in this comfy chair, right? And they've got a bunch, of, they've been reading the newspapers. There's a phone on the floor. There is an ashtray with a ton of cigarettes. They've been just chain smoking, either talking on the phone, reading the paper. There's another book there on the floor I don't know what that is but you can see that that's like the comfy spot and then we have this table with the lamp on it in the foreground some books little statues and then in the back there you see a woman at the bottom of the stairs and it's kind of hard to see her in this picture so let's change angles so this picture you can see her a little bit better actually really well so well that <laughs> you can see the pins in her hair under her hairnet, which is amazing. So it looks like we got this little banister down the stairs. It looks like she's hit her head. There doesn't seem to be blood. So that's interesting because if she died from falling down the stairs, you'd think there would be some kind of blood, but there's not. Um, there's a little chair there at the bottom of the stairway. A little flower pot on the other side next to the fireplace. Some candlesticks. That's kind of all we see. It does kind of, if you like zoom in really close to her neck. Now, I don't know if this is intentional or if it's just the aging of this piece, but the back of her neck and her skin looks irritated. If that's intentional, could that be a sign of something else? Maybe some kind of poisoning or something like that, that inflamed her skin. I don't know. Here is an angle from behind the couch where you can see a little bit more of the room. So we're just kind of... Yeah, again, I can't really see. There's nothing I didn't see in this before except for that bookshelf on the right. But her cute little sconces. And then there's the door. There's light behind the door there. I don't know where that leads to. Really couldn't say like how 
this woman died. I don't know. I have one more photo of more of a fisheye lens of his home. So this one you can see on the left side there we have some kind of terrarium or something fish tank I don't, I don't know what that is um by the window the window looks like it could be open and then you have like a clock on the wall and this thing i can't really figure out what it is this piece of furniture if it's like too big to be like a heater but it could be like a hutch because it looks like it's wooden it could be some kind of hutch or something like that okay there's a book on this table that you can kind of see in this but i can't read it the blank of the blank the star the star of the four i don't know there's an s and an f and then next to that lamp it looks to be a little thing of matches maybe maybe to start the fire or to light our cigarettes and again from this angle we really just can't tell much about the body so i feel like we would need more information from this but let me know if you guys have any theories okay and then i have one more scene to show you and this one is called the red bedroom. So I'm gonna start with this side-by-side -side shot. So you have on the left side, we have the interior bedroom where you can see a window on the left, a little chair. Um, there's some open bottles on the floor, at least one that's empty and on its side. And then you can see like a nightstand and then to the right you have like a wash table type of things. And then on the right side of this, it looks like a closet. You have a woman who with her head in a box, it looks like. And behind her you can see some open drawers. So first thought is, has this place been ransacked? And it's hard to tell if her hands are tied up or if those are just bracelets. But there's definitely a knife on the floor. And it looks like her throat's been slit. So this is all interesting. Next, I wanna look at the bedroom side. So here's a better look at the bedroom. In this one, you can see the bed. There's something on the bed, but I can't tell what it is. And here you can see that behind the bottles, it looks like a, an ashtray, I wanna say that is. There's also something yellow and white on the floor in between that ashtray and that couch. And I have no idea what that is. If you guys recognize that, let me know. Um, and then we just have like a little side table. Again, another calendar that looks like it says 1944 as well. I love this wallpaper, by the way. Um, not for a bedroom, though. It's too, the colors aren't right. And then there's some kind of like material in the foreground here. Blanket or something that's been crumpled up. And then you have a bucket next to the wash stand. I don't know if that's a regular thing. And then it looks like a coat rack on the right. Oh, if you look at the carpet, that's interesting. If you look at the the area rug under under the bed, you can see a dark spot there. Looks like a burn mark, but from what? I don't know. So let's look at a close up of the body. So in this one, you can really tell her her throat's been slit here. You still can't really tell if her hands are tied up, but it does look that way. And then on the bottom of her, by her legs, you have a suitcase. And so I have a theory that this woman was trying to leave. I think that the drawers are open because she was packing. She was trying to get out. And I have one more picture of her closet here. If you look, it looks like this whole rack would have been you know what she would have kept her all of her clothes on top right corner you have like a shoe box and some other box it looks like she was packing her stuff she's got a suitcase she's like trying to get out so this could be the case of like an abusive husband situation the top left side of the closet i don't know what that is some kind of oh it's like a hat with a face net thing one of those veils but yeah i want to that's my presumption is that she was trying to leave her husband didn't want her to leave and he killed her but why would he tie her up like that? Because that seems like that would be like an intruder type thing to do. I don't know. I have one more actually of this room from a different angle. Was somebody looking for something specific? And that's why they tied her up so that they could go through the room. Nothing looks out of place though, other than somebody's been drinking. There's that weird burn mark on the rug. Something on the bed, I cannot tell what it is. Other than like the dresser drawers out, it doesn't look like it's been ransacked. So it makes me think that she was leaving, but I don't know. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Let me know if you guys enjoyed this. I had fun going through these. Let me know if you think I 
was on to something or if you have any more theories based on these, again, there are no answers. So it's really just a test of your ability to look at the scene and pick up on things and pick up on clues. I'm sure I missed things, so please let me know. Let's talk about it in the description. It's gonna be a lot of fun to discuss and just figure out what other people see, other people's perspectives. Investigators that use them as tools will look at one for like two hours. So we've barely scratched the surface, even though this has been quite a long video, but I just, I'm so intrigued by this. And this channel is just getting more and more macabre with every video I make. You know what, if that's the direction it's heading in, and that's the direction it's heading in. I, I, I have control over it, but I'm not going to stop it. I hope you guys had fun with this. I hope you enjoyed our little detective game that we played. And I will see you next time with another video. Don't forget that life is short, so read Riley. And I will see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>